when I first got married two and a half years ago, I had little to no idea how to cook and I wasn't sure how I was going to make dinner every day. It seemed so daunting. So I did what you do when you have a problem like this and I went to Pinterest. I printed dozens of recipes. Most of them were a flop, but a few we still enjoy today. I like to think that I've come a long way since then and I've certainly learned a lot in my abilities in the kitchen, but I do still love simple go-to meals that are quick, often one pot meals that don't require much effort and of course are delicious. That's what I'm sharing with you today. I hope you enjoy and find some inspiration here. Let me know some of your favorite things to make for dinner in the comments and let's jump right in. My slow cooker is my best friend, especially on days that are busy or we are out and about a lot. This recipe is a beef ramen noodle recipe, and you're gonna start by cooking a pound of ground beef in a skillet on the stove, and then you will add that to your crock pot or your slow cooker. And then on top of that, you're going to add your bell pepper that is sliced, a cup of matchstick carrots. I'm actually adding the whole bag and then a cup and a half i do about two cups of beef broth or you can do chicken broth i'm doing a mixture because that's what i have on hand and then you're going to whisk in some garlic half a cup of soy sauce two tablespoons of brown sugar into that mixture i didn't have garlic on this day so i just added some garlic powder for extra flavor and then you will pour that over the meat and vegetables into the slow cooker. You'll want to mix that to combine. You could also add other vegetables. I think bean sprouts, different Asian vegetables would be really delicious. Even zucchini would go really well with this recipe. And I'm going to cook this on low for about six hours. Once there's about 30 minutes left in the cooking time, you're going to add two packages of ramen noodles. You don't need the seasoning packets, just the noodles. And you'll want to stir that every five or 10 minutes until it is all cooked. This recipe is so delicious and quickly has become one of our favorites. It was Valentine's Day just a few days ago, and instead of going out for dinner this year, Silas, my husband, and I, we actually cooked a meal at home together. Cooking is something that we really enjoy doing together, and we made this recipe that I'm about to share with you. It is called Marry Me Chicken. I think that it is titled very appropriately. I think the idea is that if you cook this meal for someone, they will want to marry you because that is just how delicious it is. Of the meals that I'm sharing, this one is the most involved, but it is still very easy and simple. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with three or four chicken breasts. You're going to slice them up into cutlets, season them well with salt and pepper, and then dredge them in flour, and you can just put them into a separate bowl. love using my Dutch oven for this recipe, but you could also use a frying pan or even a cast iron skillet. You're going to add the chicken to um, your pan with some oil and butter, and you're just going to cook those about five or six minutes on each side until they are cooked through. You'll probably have to do this step in batches. While that is cooking, I am getting some Parmesan cheese. You're going to use about half a cup of Parmesan cheese. I always add a little extra though. Once all that chicken is cooked, you can just set it aside. To that same pan, add one and a half cups of chicken broth and use a wooden spoon to deglaze the bottom of the pan. You're going
going to add one and a half cup of heavy whipping cream and the Parmesan cheese that is now grated. You're going to give that a mix and just let it all melt. Bring that to a simmer and you're ready to add your seasonings. usually just estimate when it comes to these seasonings but if you want exact measurements you can add one teaspoon of chili flakes a quarter teaspoon of oregano half a teaspoon of thyme and then also to that you're going to add sun-dried tomatoes about half a cup you're going to want to chop them pretty fine you can also buy them pre-chopped I did not have quite enough, but I did have a jar of sun-dried tomato pesto that I also used in this recipe. It worked out okay, but I definitely prefer the sun-dried tomatoes. At this point, you can add the chicken back into the sauce and let it simmer to get nice and thick. The thing that I think really makes this recipe is the butter sage egg noodles. You're going to bring a large pot of water to boil, add in your egg noodles, and then once they're finished, remove them from the pot to drain, and you'll add about five or six tablespoons of salted butter along with a good amount of sage. You can use like half a tablespoon to a tablespoon of dried sage. Once the butter is browning, you want to scrape it off the pan and then add your noodles back in and mix. I sincerely hope you guys try this recipe. It is definitely in our top five, even probably our top three favorite meals to make. It is so delicious. This next recipe is so quick and simple. This is a great one for on the days when I don't know what to make. I am just slicing up some bell peppers. I usually use about three bell peppers and when I make this meal, I make enough for leftovers. So it is quite a lot. I'm going to saute those with some sliced onions. You want to make sure that they are all sliced very thinly. That's just going to make the texture and the size better in the final product. And then here I am just pan frying some steaks. You can use any kind that you like. I recommend using boneless. I just buy whatever is on sale at the store usually. Once those are cooked, um, you're going to take them off. These are not completely finished. I think these would be kind of rare, I'm assuming, but I'm going to slice them fairly thinly and then I will actually put them back onto the skillet and then I will finish cooking them that way. You can of course cook your steak to how you like it. I prefer it to be a little bit closer to well done. Once all the steak is sliced up how I like, I add it back to the pan and then I'm going to incorporate those cooked bell peppers and onions. I'm going to add a whole jar of salsa. I usually just eyeball it. I think for this recipe, I did add a little bit of extra salsa because like I said, I was making quite a lot. You'll also want to add a packet of fajita mix at this point. You can also make your own by combining chili powder, cumin, salt and pepper, oregano, those sorts of spices. There's lots online um, of recipes. I can link one down below and you're going to mix that all together really, really well. We 
serve these steak fajitas on tortillas with cheese, guacamole, sour cream. You can really do any toppings that you want. This recipe would also be delicious as a bowl. I think I might make that soon on top of like rice with beans. You can add pico de gallo on top, shredded lettuce. The options are endless. Well, if you couldn't already tell, we love steak around here. This is another slow cooker recipe for steak bites, and it is so quick. It takes less than 15 minutes to prepare. This is a newer one for me to try, but it was a huge hit in our home. So you're going to start with about three pounds. I think I'm using closer to four pounds because again, we really like to have leftovers for a few days. You're going to start with cutting the steak into about bite-sized pieces. I recommend using sirloin steak. It is so tender and also very affordable. You're going to season that generously with salt and pepper. To a pan, you're going to add olive oil over medium high heat and just sear the steak pieces on all sides for about five or six minutes before transferring them to a slow cooker. You're also going to add the sliced onion and garlic to the slow cooker and toss all those ingredients together. I added about two cups of beef broth because I used extra steak. So you can add less if you're using less meat. You're also going to add a packet of gravy mix as well as about three or four tablespoons of unsalted butter. You're just going to lay that on top and then set that to low for six hours. Well, thanks so much for spending some time here on my channel today and watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully it gave you some dinner inspiration. You can find the recipes linked down in the description box. If you enjoyed this video, I would so appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you are new so that you can see future videos that I upload. I hope you are well and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.